Hello, welcome to week three of Snacks and Stretches. If you've been enjoying these videos, please subscribe to the channel and also like or comment on the video what parts you've liked, what bits you've enjoyed. Um, but let's get cracking with today's snack that we're going to create. Um, it's a banana muffin. Now, if you don't like bananas, that's absolutely fine. You can substitute the weight of the banana um, with apple sauce, so you can create that yourself. It's a direct replacement. You don't need to alter any of the sugar or the flour. Okay, so we're going to start by just preheating your oven to 180 degrees Celsius. Um, that's if it's a fan oven. Um, and the reason it's 180 is because that's what I cook most things at. Okay, so there's no real logic behind it, but it does cook these muffins really well. Okay, so the next part that you'll need to do is get a saucepan ready. You don't want to turn the heat on just yet, but you want to measure out 120 grams of coconut oil, and we will place that in. And uh, once you've uh, done that, we want to get 100 grams of coconut sugar. And we're going to add that to the mix. And then following that, we want your maple syrup. So it depends how sweet you like your muffins. Um, if you don't like sweet stuff, don't worry about adding the maple syrup. Uh, but if you do, you can add up to three tablespoons. So I'm just going to turn my heat on now. Just a medium heat, you don't want to burn the sugar. Um, and then whilst that's starting to melt, I'm going to add in my three tablespoons of maple syrup. Excellent. Right, try and drip all that up, we don't want to waste any. Um, and then you're just going to stir this in now. So just start to melt just slowly in the pan. I look a little bit like a drowned long tail today. The weather outside is awful. It's absolutely disgusting. I've just got out of isolation. The weather in isolation was beautiful and today it's horrendous. So it's actually a really good day to be inside and cooking. Um, I wasn't in isolation because I had COVID or had any of the symptoms. It was purely because I'd been away and off the island. So when you come back, you have to isolate just for seven days. And if you test negative on your two tests, then you're free to go. So freedom. Right, this is just melting quite nicely now. Now don't be tempted to turn up the temperature if your coconut oil isn't melting. My coconut oil is slightly harder than what it should be. It was kept in the fridge. Uh, when I was away, my partner put it in the fridge rather than the cupboard. And it's it's like a rock to try and get out. That's why I pre weighed it out uh, before we started. Um, so it's taking a little bit longer than normal to melt, but if yours is kept in the cupboard, that's great. Again, if you don't have coconut sugar or coconut oil, you can replace the coconut oil with butter, or you can replace coconut sugar with just like a, a golden caster sugar is fine. Or even like a nice brown sugar. For the muffins that would be nice so yes yeah, so this is starting to come together quite nicely and so we'll just leave that melting along as it's melting you don't have to stir it the whole time and so you can weigh out your oats for the next part of it so you want 200 grams of oats and in total though if you looked at the recipe it does say 220 so 20 grams of those oats and you're not going to process these oats are going to be used for your flour so you can weigh them out whilst you carry on stirring in your oil. You'll find that the coconut oil and the sugar don't really mix that well together, but in a minute we're going to be adding some egg um, and that will bind it all together. So don't worry if it looks like you've got two separate parts, it's because it's an oil and it doesn't like to uh, mix with the coconut sugar. Right, okay, so we can turn off that heat. And then now we're going to process. We're going to make our own flour. So if you've not done this before, it's quite exciting. Um, so you just need to take your food processor, tip in your 200 grams of eggs, and then we're just going to pulse it for 30 seconds.
you can take the lid of your plate, we're going to set that to the side and we're going to now take our saucepan that's got the melted sugar and oil and we're going to add the remains of the ingredients into here. So um, we're going to tip in the eggs, so you need two eggs cracked, I always crack them into a cup separately in case they have a little um, like a gag in them, I don't think it's called a gag but my mum used to call it that because it used to make her gag when she was pregnant. Um, so you can tip your eggs in straight away, you don't need to gently add them, this shouldn't go all gripey. Um, then we also need um, your vanilla extract, so it's one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Again, if you don't like vanilla, you don't have to add it. Um, and the same with the cinnamon, like you miss it out if you don't like it, but I'm going to add, again, not cumin, one teaspoon of cinnamon, roughly. And then you're going to add in your bananas. So it's like three small, medium bananas. You don't want a large banana for this. Um, so just clonk that in. Okay, there goes mine. Oh, the oven is the right temperature. And then here we can add in also our remainder of our oats as well. That can just get sprinkled in on top. And you're just going to stir that all in. If you have a whisk, a whisk is great for this part. But if you don't, just Stir away. Oops. It should start to smell quite nice. Okay, so that's all mixed in. So now what we can do is grab our homemade flour, but we need to add some baking powder because that's the part of the flour. If you use self-raising flour, that would make it rise. And um, so we're going to use one teaspoon. If your baking powder is a bit lumpy, you can use a sieve for this, but if it's not, just whack it in. Um, and then we're just going to ooh, get the processing part out. And um, we're then just going to put it all in to your other mixture. There we go. Okay, so at the same time as when you fold in the flour, you can fold in your chocolate chips. So I've got um, 100 grams of chocolate chips. You can use up to 80, 100. You can replace the chocolate chips with like a blueberry or apple chunks. You know, just um, like something that you prefer. I love chocolate, so in goes the chocolate chips at 100 grams. And then we just slowly, now you can fold this in or you can stir it. They, I think with this sort of flour, the homemade oat flour, um, it doesn't really matter if you just like whack it in and just stir, stir it in. But if you want to fold, you can fold and see if you make them more fluffy that way. Um, mm, yeah, it smells really good. And then they're all mixed together. So we can then start dividing them into your little pouches. This mixture should make um, up to 12 muffins, depending how big you want them. Um, I'm gonna try and make 12. Normally it doesn't work out because I haven't quite divided it equally enough. Um, so you can take a spoon and just, you know, put them in. I think like two tablespoons is probably the right amount go in to start with and then you can always top them up but you know, roughly two tablespoons will make the mixture the right quantity your um, snacks too, if you're taking them to a competition or out for a hack or if you're just going to feed them at home, don't want to share them with anybody, that's fine. Oh, I might have done this okay actually, I've got a little bit left for my last muffin case and I'm going to actually use the correct item to get the rest of the ingredients out. This is the best one for that. Ooh, I've got chocolate all over my top. You should never cook in white clothing or grey clothing. Clearly it's my jumper is now covered in chocolate. It's probably the worst technique to get the recipe out of the bowl but I don't want to make it make a noise. And my other implements are metal, metal and metal sounds bad. 
Right, those muffins look ready to go in the oven. So if yours have got a little bit clumpy or higher at one place or the other, just take your spoon and just plop, if you pl uh, plop it down in the middle, um, it will even up and it will cook quite nice about a really high ridge in the middle. Right, but they look really good. So, um, let's stick them into the oven. Your oven should be heated up by now, hopefully. Um, so remember 180 and we're just going to whack them in the oven. Oh, hopefully. And then you just want to set your timer for 20 minutes. Okay, so these will take like 20 to 25 minutes, but we're going to check them at 20. Um, okay, so great, the snacks are in the oven, so let's go meet on the mat. Right, our snacks are in the oven, they're cooking. Let's get cracking with some nice, gentle stretches. A little bit of a workout in today's one as well. Um, but they're going to get us ready for our competition ahead of this weekend. Or if you're out here for a hat, go to the yard. Let's bring these snacks out, let's share them with everybody that you know. So we're going to start in a wide legged child's pose. Really good for opening up those hips, getting our deep seats. Whilst you're in the saddle, so you're just going to start by placing your hips on top of your ankles. So you're going to keep your big toes together, you're going to wind up your knees, and then you're just going to walk out your hands out in front of you, and just let your chest and your forehead melt to the ground. Okay, so we can do some little bit of focusing on our breathing to start with today. So we're just going to do a big inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth. And then after that, we're just going to continue for the rest of the practice, breathing in through our nose and exhaling out through our nose. And we're just going to start thinking about setting the tone for the weekends ahead. What goals have you got? What's in what you're keeping? What's we're going to school on holidays? What we want to achieve out of each session or out of each horse that you're competing? You're going to look for a nice clear round. You're going to aim for making sure you get those centre lines nice and straight. Just trying to smash our shapes if we're in the dressage ring. Let's try and get those strides we want to in our combinations if we're jumping. And just melt that forehead and that chest down towards the mat. Yeah, so this exercise is really good for opening up those hips, getting our nice deep seat when we're in the saddle. So we're really gripping the horse unintentionally, disturbing its rhythm. If we grip with our seat, with our knees, and we end up having a horse that is not as free, a little bit more unrhythmical, not very pleasant to watch. Let's see. So from here, we're just going to inhale and we're going to lift up, lift our hips up off our heels and go forward so our shoulders are over our wrists. We're going to exhale and then our hips go back onto our ankles. So we're going to inhale, we can grab the back this time, shoulders over your wrists, exhale, lower back down. And just keep working through this stretch, through this movement, working our spine, working our hips. On the inhale, you grab the back, and on the exhale, you can drop and lower those hips towards your heels. Good. That's great. Just a couple more of these. Keep the breath. So inhale, you just go forward. Exhale, you just go back. So it's just working more and more on our hip mobility, and then the last one, and then we're going to come up forward and we're just going to go into a neutral tabletop pose. So from here just make sure your wrists are below your shoulders, your knees are below your hips, you're nice and strong, tight through your core, and then from here we're then going to start some cat and cow So on the inhale, you're going to drop your belly, lift your gaze, the tailbone goes up, and on the exhale, round and contract chin to chest. So just keep working through those. It's great for getting a nice straight back when you're in the saddle. Or when you're going hollowing. Good. And through your breath, 
try and push a little bit more into the point of your spine but on supple so we don't want to just work for existing flexibility points we're going to try and move into the part that's a little bit stiffer a little bit harder to get to that's great in any case i'm just going to walk forward a little bit so i'm going to step my right foot back okay and i'm going to have space so you can join me here we can step our right foot back keep your toes tucked underneath and you're going to press down through that right heel and we're just going to try and stretch out the back of our leg just going to help us get a nice long leg low heel when you're in the saddle a nice elegant long dressage leg that we all want we don't want to have a short tight um, tight leg struggling to get our heels pushed down this will just help with any flexibility issues that are preventing that from happening Nose and out through the nose. 
Your breath goes all the way down to your belly. That's great. And then we're going to walk our hands back in to meet our shoulders. Lift up back into our tabletop pose. Let's get them. Get that nice strength in that table. So we're just going to now lift our left leg up. I'm going to press it back, toes to the ground, and push down through that left heel. Let's stretch that calf muscle, the hamstring. And let's get that long leg leg here. We're just repeating the same sequence on the other side. That's it. So just pushing down, pressing through. See if we can get some nice long legs. Work with what we've got. That's great. Then you lift up with that left leg, cross it over your right side, and sink into your left hip. If you want to, you can look around to the right. So you can feel that stretch. Sink deep and down. Each exhale, let your hips drop a little bit more to the left. That's great. 
once more. And then hands one down, move the left foot back, lift up with the left hand, follow it with your gaze, spread it through, and rest your chin, oh, not your chin, rest your cheek to the ground. And breathe into the stretch. Big inhale through the nose. Exhale through the nose. And then lift back up, follow up your gaze. And then we're going to walk our hands a little bit in front of our shoulders, check the toes and the knees, lift up, press up and back. And then we're going to start paddling our feet out. Imagine you've got a tail, wag your tail if you're a dog. Yeah, that's it. Feet are hip width distance apart. Try and press down through those heels. Shake your head, move through your neck. Let's get nice and supple. That's good. Feel how you feel this down dog. Equal weight through the whole of the hands. Yeah, that's great. Right, so now with our right foot, we're going to lift it up, bend the knee, open up the hip, and then we're going to start to step through into our pigeon pose, okay? So we're going to step our right foot, right ankle behind our left hand, and our left knee goes behind our right hand, okay? So you can allow your ankles to come a little bit closer to your body if you're feeling a little bit stiff today. And I want you to sink your hips towards the ground, square them up, we don't want to be twisted through this. Our left foot goes out behind us. You can either stay up tall or if it feels comfortable for you, you can relax forward and down into it. Okay? So we do a couple of breaths here. Try and sink your hips down low to the ground. This is one of my harder stretches. So if you find this one a little bit difficult, just keep breathing. It will get easier with time. Think about your competition. Take your mind off the stretch. Focus on your intention, on your goals, for the competition or the weekend ahead. Your goal could be like spring clean your stable. It doesn't have to be a written goal. Fantastic. Right, let's press up. Slowly come out of this stretch because it's a difficult one. And then we're just going to meet in downward facing dog at your own time. So lift your hips up, press them up and back. Bring that chest towards your thighs. Waggle out that tail again. Be a happy dog. There we go. And then we lift up with our left leg up to the sky, bend the knee, open up the hip. Really press up, try and get that ankle towards your glute. That's good. And then we're going to Step it through, and your right ankle goes behind your right. So you have your left ankle goes behind your right wrist. And then with your own time, square off your hips, sink them down low, and relax into it. And some nice deep breaths. This is gonna be working on your seat again. Lots of, lots of today's exercises have worked to opening up those hips. So we're not interfering with the horse's natural way of going. Again, I said this last bit, you can still grip and you can interfere. If you were nervous or if you were just holding on. But um, this is just going to be getting rid of the lack of flexibility which will be making you grip. If you have a tight seat and I tell you to relax, or your instructor tells you to relax, you might not actually be able to sit any looser because you lack that range of motion. So all of these hip openers are going to help with that. And your horse will truly be thankful. Breathe out, sink a little bit deeper. Go on, you can do it. We're not here for much longer now. You'll be able to eat the banana muffin in no time. And then slowly start to come out of it. And we're going to start on our back. Okay, so we're slowly with control, lower down onto the mat, and find the butterfly pose. So you're going to bring your feet together, the soles of your feet together, and then you just let your knees flop to the side. Again, just opening up those hips, working on that seat this week, and your arms. They can either stay where they are, at your side, or you can reach them up and overhead, and invite a little bit of a shoulder opening. That's good. So knees are 
wide, working on our seat. Nice, I've said it all throughout today, it's all about your deep seat, just allowing that horse to move with freedom underneath us. We often talk about the horse going left to without a rider. Especially when you're to the gym, you need some horses to a lot better about the rider interfering with them. It's the same on the flat. We don't want to be gripping or holding on, interfering unnecessarily with our horses way of going. And this is our last pose of today. So we're just waiting now for our beeper to go. So just nice big breaths in and out through the nose. Oh, and there's the beeper. So come back up slowly. <laughs> Do race to the oven. And then we're just going to go and check out our little snacks. But if they're not quite cooked, you just need to add an extra five minutes and they'll be perfect. So stick a skewer in. If you get a chocolate chip, um, it probably is cooked. But if you've got uh, loose material in there, um, stick it back in for an extra five minutes. Okay, so I'm going to go check my snacks and I'll come back and see how they're like. Ooh, these look super tasty. Let's have a little look at them. If it's cooked, that is, it's pretty hot still. Okay. Mm, yeah, they're good. They are really tasty. Mine have got so many chocolate chips in. So, right treats if anyone has one of these. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with your competing this weekend. Good luck with you just going to the yard to clean and tidy. You probably need more luck with your competing. Um, enjoy the snacks, enjoy the stretches. And I look forward to seeing you for the last week next week. If you've enjoyed the snacks and stretches today, please like. The video, subscribe to the channel, little comments, let me know how you got it on, and I'll see you next week. Bye!